not sponsored. Gear review. Ow. Fuck. Let's talk about the Fujifilm X-Pro3. This is not gonna be another one of those videos where it's like, oh wow, look at this weird screen. The camera has a weird screen. Did you know the screen is weird? The screen, so weird, super weird. Oh my God, the screen, so weird. We are gonna talk about the screen though. The Fujifilm X-Pro3 is a camera that very high key made me feel things good things. To be fully transparent here, I got this camera on loan from Fujifilm, but I am not being paid or anything like that. These are my honest thoughts from using the camera for a couple weeks. If you're new here, I split my reviews into three parts. I talk about the photos, and then I talk about the videos, and finally the ease of use and ergonomics. And one last quick note here. This is an interchangeable lens system, but I only had the one lens that Fuji sent me. So normally my reviews do go a little bit more in depth in the whole system, but in this case I only had the one lens. So keep that in mind as you watch this. And while I'm addressing new people here, why don't you take one of Fuji's beautiful film emulations and take a picture of that subscribe button and also give me a thumbs up. That'd be cool. Incoming hot take. I think the X-Pro3 is very clearly designed to be a photo camera. Its design throws back to the older rangefinder style cameras. And I gotta tell you, the camera just has a mojo to it. It's hard to describe. It's just one of those things where when you hold it, you'll just kind of know. It feels... Perfect. It's fun to use. It just made me want to go out and shoot more. The image quality is unreal. I mentioned in the Fujifilm X-T30 video that I got on board with the film simulation life, and that has not changed for me with the X-Pro3. In fact, I think the back screen is the best application of this feature. It's a gimmick, for sure, but being able to see what film simulation you're using on that little back window is one less menu thing I have to think about. I can get a quick look at what I'm shooting on, pull the camera up to my eye, and do my thing. And I get it, some people are gonna say this is a hipster thing. And you know what? It is, but I love it. Cause you are more than 12 feet deep. I really loved shooting on the X-Pro3. Have I said that before? I haven't felt that way about a digital camera in a while, honestly. I was, I was smitten, real talk. I didn't want to send it back to Fuji. I wouldn't say street photography is something I necessarily excel at. I definitely need plenty of practice, but since starting this channel, I've done it a ton more, and I can confidently say the X-Pro3, it's a dream for street photography, at least for me anyway. One thing I think not enough people are mentioning is how practical and ingenious the screen is for street photography. Stay with me here. With the screen folded down, you can easily shoot from the hip and just kind of glance down to get an idea of what you're shooting. It's really a fantastic system that reminds me of shooting with a waist level viewfinder. And since I started shooting on the Mamiya 645, that waist level thing is really awesome. And it's certainly not a unique thing. I know a lot of the Sony cameras can bend the same way so you can look down at your screen and get that similar waist level viewfinder experience. And it seems like waist level shooting was in mind when they designed the screen. A few of my favorite shots were made this way. I will say though, on the whole, I tended to lean towards just using the electronic viewfinder. More on that later though. Similar to what I mentioned in the X-T30 review, the skin tones just look awesome, especially using the film simulations. One last thought to add to this section, I took this camera out when it was really foggy and overcast and I gotta say, the camera really shines in those conditions. The lights almost get this halation effect on them, there's just a really really unique character to these images. And I know you get that softbox effect in the reflections in the street with any camera, but there really is something special to these images. I like them anyway. Full disclosure here, I only had the camera for three weeks and I didn't do a ton of video stuff, but here are my thoughts on the video. Look what's down there, we got some swans. That's nice. It's gonna be hard for me to discuss the video without touching on ease of use and ergonomics, so these sections are gonna get to know each other a little bit. When I was talking about the photography, I mentioned that the X-Pro3 feels like it favors the stills, it's more of a photography camera. And while this is a hybrid camera, video features are present and frankly they're robust, the camera itself is not very conducive to 
the video experience. Similar to the X-T30, the X-Pro3 goes up to 4K DCI at 30 frames per second, which is your 17 by 9 aspect ratio, regular 4K up to 30 FPS, and 1080 up to 60 FPS. You can choose your video bitrate, which goes up to 200 megabits per second, which is a really awesome feature. F-Log, Eterna, and all the other film simulations are all still at the party. If you're just in a studio and it's on a tripod and you can kind of set it and be behind the camera, then I think it's really good for video. But to me, if you're in that run and gun style of shooting, it's just not built for it. The hidden screen makes it weird to monitor your video. And obviously for the YouTube person, there's no real means of monitoring yourself without some sort of monitor. Or Zelda mirrors. That said though, it's kind of a shame because the video from the X-Pro3 looks really good. In a pinch, you have a solid video camera, but it's a tad finicky to use, and to me, ease of use is really so important. The X-Pro3 feels pretty damn good in the hands. It's lightweight, but it doesn't feel like a toy. The body itself is very similar in terms of size and weight to the X100F. That might not be the most helpful thing to those of you who don't have an X100F or have never used one, but you can at least see them side by side here. It's just a little tiny bit bigger. The grip feels great and the finish on the camera is so nice. The buttons are satisfying to operate and they give great feedback. The dials, oh my god the dials, especially the exposure compensation dial, so clicky and great. I could just fiddle with that and not even take a picture, it's just it's fun to move. To me, getting into aperture priority or the program mode even and just living on that exposure compensation dial, it's the dream, it's such an amazing way to shoot. For the bulk of the time I shot on the X-Pro3, I used the electronic viewfinder. The EVF is so crystal clear and beautiful. It's hard to explain, but it really helped put me in the zone. The second I was looking through that EVF, it was like I was so focused on just what I was doing and not worrying about all the other buttons and dials and stuff like that. It really does kind of make me feel like I'm using a film camera, which I, I know <laughs> sounds like a hipstery thing to say, but it's pretty damn cool. The layout of the camera makes a lot of sense too. The buttons are really nicely arranged, they're spaced out, and there's plenty of room for custom buttons and all that fun stuff. The X-Pro3 does in fact have dual card slots. There isn't a dedicated headphone jack, but you can get a USB-C dongle to plug headphones in. The X-Pro3 boasts a 26.1 megapixel APS-C X Trans CMOS sensor. Unlike the X100 series, this is an interchangeable lens system. I only got to try out the 23mm f2, which is an XF series lens. It's a 35mm equivalent on full frame, and it's a beautifully sharp lens. And now here's a couple of things I wasn't super crazy about. The way you operate the ISO on this camera is you lift up this little cuff that's around the shutter speed dial. It kind of annoyed me. Frankly, I felt like leaving it on auto was the move because it's really fiddly and annoying to adjust quickly. And then they introduced the X100V and I saw that cuff and it locks in place. What? What the fuck? Why wasn't that on this camera? Why? <laughs> Why didn't you put that on this camera? I also feel like the joystick, while it did work and it's good for selecting single point autofocus, it could just be a little bit bigger. The back of the camera has a little bit of that real estate. It's free real estate. I'm not really sure why it's about the same size as the one in the X100F. Having it a little bit bigger would make that a whole lot more comfortable to use. While I really do like the way the back panel works in showing you what film simulation you're using, I found that at certain angles it's so difficult to see whether you're out in the bright sunlight or the light's just hitting it the wrong way. And it is important for me to note, I think the low light performance is a little rough if you're someone like me coming from Sony. The higher ISO does get pretty grainy. Though I will say these photos came out pretty creepy looking and uh, I like that. And to be fair, even though there were streetlights there, that park was pretty dark. I would hardly say the ISO performance is a deal breaker. And one other thing I gotta mention is the price. Now the camera comes in three different finishes which each come with a different price tag. But around two grand for this camera without a lens, that might be a little steep for people entering into the system, especially when the older X100Fs can be had for, you know, between six and seven hundred bucks right now in 2020. But personally in my opinion, this is a lot more of a camera than the X100F. I love my X100F, but to me, the X-Pro3 just has a lot more going for it, especially the interchangeable lens part. But ultimately, it's your money and your decision, so these are just my thoughts. And that's it, I really don't have a ton of things to complain about this camera, I genuinely liked it a lot.
To say I enjoyed my time with the X-Pro3 would be an understatement. It's one of my favorite digital cameras from the last few years, and honestly, after the time I spent with it, I'm considering buying one. The only thing that's held me back is the announcement of the X100V, which I should be getting my hands on soon, Fuji, wink wink, nudge nudge. So to be determined, if hybrid shooting and video stuff matters a ton to you, I think the X-T30 or the X-T3 would be a better Fuji for you. But if you want a very pure stills camera that goes back to that film vibe, a very fun and inspiring camera that's a dream to use, look no further. The X-Pro3 checks all those boxes. Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Big shout out to Fuji for letting me borrow this camera. I, uh, I appreciate you immensely and thanks for letting me say whatever. Anyway guys, what do you think? Do you have an X-Pro3? you ever use one? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And as always, you can find me on the socials. I'm on MySpace, Discord, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, not Facebook because Facebook sucks. And uh, connect with me and send me some stuff and I'll, uh, I'll talk to you. All right guys, uh, be good. I'll see you later. All right, bye. <laughs> Yo, how great would it be if that motherfucker came up here and just started, like, killing me? The dials? Oh. <laughs> but you guys know this wouldn't be me being... Your beard looks magical. Thank you. You're welcome. Like and subscribe to Sweet Lou Photography. The man.